road safety is a national problem. We in Essex are alive to the difficulties and much is already being done to prevent the grievous and unnecessary toll of road deaths. But the real answer lies in the hands of the road users themselves. A little more common sense, a little more care, and there would be no problem to solve. Take this example, a busy junction with a main road crossing from left to right, carrying a large amount of fast traffic. A halt sign is prominently displayed. They know what to expect, but do they halt? Not on your life. Look at them racing onto the major road, endangering not only their own lives, but also those of the people on the main thoroughfare. Here's the South End Arterial Road on a wet day. Cycle tracks are provided for the safety of cyclists. Do they use them? No, they prefer to pedal along serenely, risking a serious accident from a chance skid on a greasy road. Back from the seaside, father in the saddle, mother on the pillion, and junior sitting astride the tank. The slightest lurch or a hurried stop will dislodge him and another child will grow up maimed or disfigured. Roundabouts have been constructed on this road to minimize the danger at road junctions. But remember, there is no such thing as a dangerous road. It is the people who use it that make it dangerous. A blind crossing, a crossroad sign to warn oncoming traffic, but already the scene of several fatal accidents. Notice the cyclist and car crossing the main road. They are practically out of sight until they emerge into the road itself. A motorist on the main road traveling fast and ignoring the crossroad sign would, well, I hate to think what would happen. A pedestrian crossing is provided at this spot in Rumford. Do they play for safety and use it properly? Well, just watch. There are far too many accidents in Romford, and this time it's due mainly to the stupidity of pedestrians. All traffic is forgotten in the rush for the bus. Why worry? Surely it's far better to be a few minutes late for an appointment than never to get there at all. One of the widest streets in Essex is at Brentwood. Just watch these examples of careless pedestrianism. You will see them come out into the stream of traffic, find they can't make it, and go back again quite oblivious to what's coming behind. The main Brentwood to Chelmsford Road carries heavy traffic and is the scene of a lot of careless overtaking. And so to the county town, another paradise for the careless walker, especially on market days when the streets are crowded with all types of traffic. Police notices are often ignored, and parked cars add to the congestion with its attendant dangers, not only to traffic, but to people wishing to cross the street. Cyclists are another cause of trouble. If you can guess what that signal means, you're a good deal brighter than I am. And look at these old dears, quite unaware that there's traffic behind. Study these examples carefully and try and learn from other people's foolishness. They get older but not wiser, it seems. Certainly the grown-ups don't set the youngsters a very good example.
Now look at them. Three abreast. They're old enough to know better, if you like, but no, some people never learn. She'll never see what's coming from there either. Pavements are provided for walking, car parks for parking. But this bus driver can't pull into the curb properly because of carelessly parked cars. He has to stop for passengers and makes the congestion worse. From a window in the Shire Hall, you can see easily how many risks are run unnecessarily by road users of all kinds and how much of the trouble is caused by careless parking. The woman with the pram is not only holding up the traffic, but risking her life and the life of her baby as well. Bad weather adds to the hazards. Remember that on a wet day, a motorist can't stop quickly without the risk of skidding. His visibility is considerably reduced and accidents happen quickly. The junction of New Street and Victoria Road in Chelmsford is another danger spot, mainly because of the large amount of motor and cycle traffic from the works. Watch carefully and see how many cyclists try and jump the lights. There they go. A car doing the same thing from the other direction would account for a good batch of cyclists in just a split second. Notice too, how the cyclists take up over three quarters of the width of the road, squeezing the rest of the traffic almost over onto the curb. With a car coming the other way, it only wants a pedestrian to step carelessly off the pavement, and either the walker or a cyclist would probably not live to tell the story. There's a very large bus traffic here too, which causes more congestion and danger to road users. Look at them. Four abreast. Here's another black spot in Chelmsford, the junction between Mosham Street, running from left to right, and Elm Road. The cyclists approach down Elm Road and swerve straight across the main road, apparently without even troubling to look each way. They take a lot of unnecessary risks, and there is absolutely no excuse for it. They can't even plead ignorance because the junction is well indicated by road signs. The lorry driver is rightly a careful type, but often the traffic along Mosham Street is fast and heavy, and the cyclists quite ignore the danger, and over their large as life. It might easily be as large as death. They don't care. They would care if a car were coming, though, and a little thought would make the risk non-existent. Some of them seem to think that the sign is put there for their amusement, not for their safety. Problems of road safety are not seen in the road like these at Hatfield Peveril. They have an open space behind. Why use the road as a playground? The crossroads at Rivenhall Fox have been the scene of two fatal accidents within two weeks, mainly due to the fact that the corner is a blind one and traffic approaches it at high speed. And so we come to the ancient town of Colchester with its narrow streets and careless pedestrians. Living amid history as they do, the people of Colchester seem not yet to have heard that motor cars have been invented. That is, if you judge from their behaviour. Their attitude is apparently one fostered by centuries of unmolested walking, and they look on the motor car as a newfangled gadget which must be kept strictly in its proper place behind the pedestrian. Watching these pictures, you'll soon realise that although Colchester's famous football team had a plan, its pedestrians certainly have not. Neither is their footwork in any way as slick as the United's.
Don't look now, dear, but I think we're about to be knocked down. Groups of people like these, standing, talking at the side of the road, don't help matters much. Parked cars are just as much a nuisance in Colchester as anywhere else. Just watch this. That car, carelessly left by the roadside, makes it impossible for the bus to pull out without crossing the stream of traffic from the opposite direction. Here are all the makings of a first-class jam. Everyone in a hurry, and everyone tries to squeeze through until the police car does the right thing and waits till the bus gets out of trouble. Roadside market stalls are also dangerous in Colchester. At least, it's not the stalls, it's the pedestrians who insist on strolling along the wrong side of them. And here's another lesson in parking. The cars are parked so close together that walkers can't get between them to the pavement. So, once again, they stay on the roadside. Still, it's not so much their fault this time. I say, what a smart signal. He must have seen the officers in the car. Get back, lady, or you'll never get your shopping home safe and sound. Yes, there are a lot of people in Colchester so intent on their shopping that they forget all about the elementary rules of road safety. These two children are waiting until the policeman tells them it is safe to cross. Here's an example of a bad signal. The right signal, all right, but much too late, and it might have caused an accident. Even Colchester's dogs don't seem to have learned, or perhaps they have from their careless masters. Dogs cause 15% of street accidents. Why not keep your pets under control for their own safety as well as other road users? Children are in danger here from traffic as well as falling, and guardrails are provided for protection, not amusement. That's a fine place to leave a trade cycle, a gust of wind and a nasty accident. It's foolish because it's so unnecessary. Now we've arrived at St. Butthoff's Corner, one of the danger spots of Colchester. Scene of several accidents, mainly due to the concealed approach from the road on the right. Here's a bus driver at fault. He may be fed up with following a horse and cart, but why pass it right on a blind corner? Wait until it stops, man. It'll only take you a second to walk back from the bus stop. Here's the bypass and a pedestrian crossing. I think so to look at the way they cross over. So near to the studs. Why not do it properly, sir, and set an example to your two boys? Roundabouts are provided for traffic safety, not for crossing the road. In between the cars and into the middle. If he gets stranded on that particular desert island, I'm sure the police won't take him his food. No, he's off again. Another risk taken by an irresponsible citizen. If you go on like that, 
There'll be another funeral in Colchester, and you, for one, won't know a thing about it. Be careful. Why run unnecessary risks? On a Sunday, every motorist in Essex and roundabout seems to be heading for Clacton. When they get there, the joys of holiday-making absorb their thoughts and rules of the road and common sense are put aside. Pedestrians, cyclists and motorists all forget the elementary fact that if they don't take a bit more care, they may well finish their day out in hospital or worse. The casual way the pedestrians meander across the road is only matched in foolishness by the winding path taken by some motorists along the front. Make up your mind, madam. There are always a lot of children about at the seaside, and of course they find a good deal to amuse them. These chains outside the Century Cinema, for instance. Absorbed in their game, they're just as likely to rush across the road as not. Pull your socks up, son, but not in the road. Should children as young as this be allowed to play unsupervised at the side of the road? The answer is obvious. Do look after your children all the time even if it does mean boxing them up and carting them about with you. Daddy's bike is far too big for the pavement. And certainly this sort of thing is not to be recommended. Now here's another danger spot. This Clacton Road junction has been the scene of many accidents, especially to pedestrians who walk blindly out across the road without even a glance to left or right. Cars often come round the corner much too fast, and this is the kind of thing which could easily happen. This is just double exposure, but why expose yourself to unnecessary risks? Clacton has many five-way junctions like this one. Care has to be taken in crossing, and if you don't know quite what you're going to do next, for goodness sake, stop somewhere and make up your mind. Don't dither about like this driver. Stupid indecisions can have serious results. Remember, this film has only shown you a small part of the stupidity of all classes of road users. Don't do as they do, for your own sake and for the sake of others. It is only by constant care on the part of everybody that we shall be able to reduce the toll of accidents in Essex and eventually over the whole country.